Hello everybody, I'm Daniele Fontani, I'm here today for talking about DevOps and how to push uh, heat to the next level. Um, hello, hello, uh, just jump into, into the presentation, I'm really happy to be here and take part of these great events. Uh, who I am, I try to explain myself in just three uh, pictures. And I always tell that when I'm not tracking, I'm not, I'm not playing with open source. I stay at work and try to do my best for build a better tomorrow. If you want to reach out, uh, uh, just follow me on the social network, drop me a message uh, or connect on LinkedIn. This is the quicker way for asking me everything about this presentation and uh, maybe share your opinion and give me feedback. It's really, really, really important for uh, who talk and who make the speech to have feedback and understand how to improve their self um, and provide always better contents. Uh, let's go into the presentation. Let's jump into the agenda. Uh, what is DevOps today? This is the first po point that we have to uh, talking about uh, today and we want to learn why DevOps is so important for companies and second point is talking about the future of DevOps because uh, we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared to the next level to support our customer and our companies. And the third point is how to survive this change because every change uh, can be an opportunity. We have to make that and how we'll give to you some practical solution that will put theory in practice. Well, uh, very interesting. Um, starting from the first point, what is DevOps today? Um, what is DevOps? First point. Uh, DevOps is uh, a term coined in 2009 from Patrick Dubois and is the mixture of Dev and Hops together. We all, we all know that and um, we can tell that more than uh, something physical, it's more a philosophy, a philosophy of putting together Dev and Hops together. Um, but how DevOps changed our lives? Uh, well, it helps with process definition and automation. He brings us better quality. It reduces human error, reduces misunderstood between the teams, and he helps communicating. Well, this in poor world, uh, remove whole field between offices and make things easier and smooth. So, what is the state of heart? Uh, nowadays, the world is growing. Most of the company implement it or, or plan to implement it in the near future. Uh, but the question is how they organize the time, the team. Are the, are, right, they are, are the organization right? How much companies do DevOps? Just see some numbers because numbers never lie. Um, the first column is about the uh, revenue of the market, of the DevOps market. In 2022, uh, this market will touch 8 billion. Then in 2025, we'll reach about 13 billion. So it's growing, it's growing. Um, just see the second column about the VOP usage. Into, by 2023, we will go from the 3% to the 30% of organization that are releasing codes uh, with DevOps only. And if you see the third column, very interesting, about manual deployments, CNCF till, tell that we passed from 40 to 28% of application, sorry, from 28 to 40% of application that are released manually. So we drop, we drop this number. And this is why uh, DevOps is, so, is spreading so fast. And in fact, uh, 
uh, it's a philosophy. It's a philosophy that is spreading the world. Uh, but how? How we implement it? Because of course you cannot. We cannot deploy um, an application using just philosophy. All right. Okay. This 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 uh, this is an, uh, a pint um, unwritten by myself. So you will understand why I'm a DevOps engineer instead of a, a graphic designer. But I think that. It should it should explain what is the, the problem that company has when has to start thinking about how to define the DevOps teams. So the first way they do is using shared resources. So uh, we have an operation system, we have developer system, the, the developer team. We just put together and using stand, uh, shared resources. This is a way. This is a way. The quicker one and has some pros and some cons uh, the pros is that we have resources that are always updated on dev and operation uh, competencies because they still work on the team uh, but the problem is that we have not full-time devops so if you have to call someone maybe he's doing some task and he cannot be always always responsible as you would so the second opportunity is to create a team an embedded team so you just have a team that do all the devops and even the situation some pro and some cons so the pro is the team is always available it's focused on devops and has no double hat so no conflictive interest he is here to do devops only the problem with this solution is that if you remove a developer from a developer team, if you remove the operation from the operation team, they may lose the hard skill of develop and operation. So the solution is to keep them updated with training and this may have a cost for you. The last, the last schema we can have in companies, maybe in a bigger company that have their product based company or division based company it can be that each division or each product has an internal uh, devops team so one devops team for each product an example this is another situation that you can have uh, the pro of course that you the team is always available is near to the dev team there are no conflict between division or between product teams uh, the problem with there is that you may have some different realm and the problem in this in that case is to share common way common uh, practice between teams well um but come back let's come back so to some other number uh, this is a, a statistic from the 2019 so probably number today uh, a little bit better but I just want to focus on the last number of the row companies that tell I've never heard of DevOps before the 6%. This is impressive. And the first one companies that tell that they have fully embraced DevOps. We are talking about the 17%. So, so there is a very big spread between what we think it's the reality. So when we told about DevOps and spreading the world, every company wants DevOps and what is the reality? What is the reality? So what's next? What next? Uh, keeping this number in memory, okay, in our mind, uh, just see what can be the future of DevOps because we have to be ready. We have to be prepared for supporting our customer in this, in this journey. Uh, we see that a lot of company have to be helped uh, in DevOps transition and we have to do that with the right tool, with the right solution. The first, the first uh, item is about DevSecOps, of course. Um, it is just buzzword or something or something that can be implemented. Uh, well, what's the matter with security? I don't want to say that uh, now security is important but previously it wasn't security has always been important but with the growing of digital services and the uh, sensitiveness of data 
there are inside these digital services just think about uh, biometric data photographic data and physical data and and more and more and um, if you think also to low like gdpr and so on we had to take care about data and the user the user uh, is starting asking where their data are and how we are managing so our customer expect that we keep the information secure and safe we cannot fail with that we cannot fail um, by the way the user is was more demanding and we need to support agile processes to be responsive to the change you want feature user want feature uh, soon so it's very hard it's very hard to uh, follow this flow because we cannot go live without a security check of course but we cannot block the, the development process so we cannot handle the situation where we finish a project maybe with a big feature uh, and the project is stopped by SecOps because they find that there is a security issues and for weeks uh, the, the project cannot be live or worst we have to redo all the work because some sm small data was forgot by developers so um, we need to integrate devops in uh, with security operation and uh, we have to involve these guys since the beginning and basically we have to replicate what happened with dev and operation same with security well because we cannot do that. Just see this diagram where we have dev, test, and then security sec check. But if this security check is failed, we cannot come back to the beginning. Just see this in a different graphical way, but it's the same. We cannot design the application, do, 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 and then at the end, just see our deployment rejected. So what we have to do, of course, is to uh, to bring security together with dev and operation and maybe uh, maybe use all the tool on uh, all the opportunities that the market gives to us for automating tests and made that most of the tests are done automatically without any manual support and this will be great because uh, it let you prevent situation where there are some security issue before days before month before the go live date so this will be safe and this will be agile. So let's try to implement this in our real world project. Um, second point is about no hops. No hops is madness. Uh, probably yes, if we think to, if we aim to remove completely the operation layer from our system, um, but just see what is the meaning, the real meaning of the no operation world. Uh, literally, it means that there is no operation inside your flow. Um, but re really, uh, the purpose of no office is to define a process where is, there is no need to combine uh, the part of development with the operation uh, to make things work. So we want to reduce as much as possible the, the effort on the operation side. This can be done by automating things, can be done by buying ready-to-go things, maybe using the cloud. Um, the idea is to have a platform that doesn't need any human action, and this will remove any friction related to the human action. Uh, in example, you can connect your repository code directly with the Rocco to have a no-hop solution. This concept is very interesting. Um, it's very interesting because just, just see this diagram, Instead of having a one step of DevOps, developers are aware of what happened in production and everything go directly to the production. And this is very interesting because it removes friction, removes cost related to the DevOps and so on. But what is the matter with that? We cannot forget about monitoring, security and FinOps. So uh, probably is a good driver to automate everything, is a good driver to use ready to go tools like the cloud one and this is the good part of course we cannot aim um, to completely remove the operation guys because we still need to have control about what happened but we have to put less effort as possible on uh, on this on, on this uh, on this step then
then another thing is that some years ago uh, seemed something like uh, uh, chimera uh, infrastructure as a code um, i love such source code i hope you too and nothing is better than source code it is versionable can be copied and pasted can be sent via mail and and if you execute twice you got the same result hopefully uh, historically sysadmin things uh, uh, are not the same you cannot just cut and paste uh, a data center and send it via mail right i I'm never been able to do that um, the good news is that your infrastructure can be like source code if you want if you want um, we already introduced solution like ansible or Auto automation framework in fact we can version your script and automate infrastructure management and this is what we uh, should try to do because doing that doing that we can create an infrastructure that is like sucrose code so it can be versioned can be shared can be replicable it can be easy to restore so in poor world in poor world we can just try to adopt one of these three tool probably Hansible is a good solution for automating what happened in virtual machine or can be automated by script and Terraform is very good for cloud solution or for implementing infra complex infrastructure um, by the way by the way if we want to find a, a solution that is a compromise probably but works I think about kubernetes kubernetes um, is described about the yaml file and the yaml file uh, even its uh, configuration file probably is very similar for uh, uh, to, to, to source code and can be versioned can be shared can be reused uh, if you think about a uh, tool like helm this helps very very lot for replicating infrastructure or part of the infrastructure so even in this case using containers using kubernetes using modern technology can be very useful for for um, enabling enabling things like uh, infrastructure as a code well this is another interesting point we are, are just back to the philosophical part of the of this presentation um, and, and we'll talk about pipeline and limitation of pipeline nowadays and how to how to go forward and <clears throat> remove this limitation for uh, from our, our project the traditional pipeline is something like that when we have a build process the test process the package and the deployment project so basically we are talking about a linear process linear process this this process probably was good uh, in 2009 when we started doing devops and when we have monolithic application mobile uh, probably you in 2009 you was running a mdc application when everything was inside one single code base front end back end that access layer and apis everything was inside a single code base a monolithic application that we call build and test and release without any issues um but nowadays it's something different just think about uh, i don't want to talk about microservices where this will be more evident but just think about single page application with rpa backend we are just talking about uh, a, a front-end application a api backend and probably more than one external system every of the or every of that component can be changed and need to change with a different workflow with different timing with different need so even a single application a simple application have almost two or three component each component each component have different different flow and it is very hard to coordinate all of them if you use uh, three or four or more different pipeline if there is no coordination between the de deployment workflow and that's why there is another term for that uh, assembly lines just image a single process where all the actor all the teams that are involved in the software production just put their contribution this photo is from the ford motor company and um, just 
give you an idea about uh, the assembly line process is. So every team contribute to uh, a production line and everybody see what happened inside this. Well, this is a more complex scenario and we see with different color, different teams. So we can see developers and operation guys, the SecOp. So image that uh, security teams uh, produce the images, produce the Docker images to be deployed and then operations set up the deployment of the images and ensure that everything goes fine to the infrastructure. We have this test guys that is inside the process. So developer are inside the process. Um, and then we have also, we may have a project manager or tester or um, analyst. Everybody see what happened in, inside our big assembly line. So how to implement that for implementing that we have to bring all the people all the person all the team uh, inside one single uh, one single application one single um island of automation this as automation is something that you don't really need to buy because you probably already have your company it's a mixture it's a mixture or tool you need the source control you need uh, you need continuous integration, you need artifact repository, you need, of course, test tool and infrastructure provision. We already see some of, of that in the previous slide. We need some great system for get notification and communicating. Uh, and then we have to be able to deploy to deploy to the to the infrastructure. Well, um, all of that, we, we, I just want to mention um, Azure DevOps or GitLab probably cover this tool, cover most of this situation, and you are able to bring all the team, all the member of the team inside this this uh, this tool and give transparency over what happened inside the project. So this is another thing that is feasible and you should do uh, since tomorrow. Uh, the, the last point uh, is about cloud. This uh, slide is. Um, is quite useless because everybody know uh, the role of cloud, the why we have to use it and include in our project. Um, but I just want to remark it. I just want to tell once again that uh, when possible, you should use the cloud. Cloud boost our process. Cloud cloud is the right support for the for our process of business process and devops process so uh, wrapping up all this this part uh, we have to follow mostly five driver five good driver first one is integrating security inside your process since the beginning for avoid bad surprise at the end we have to start thinking about uh, limiting the effort on the infrastructure applying no hops approach and we have to manage everything, also infrastructure as a code for being replicable, for uh, avoid to work two times on doing repetitive tasks. We have to uh, create a container for all the teams and all the people involved in the project um, because the end of pipeline is, is finished. And then we have to include cloud in everything we, we do. So, so we finished to talk about what is the future of DevOps and what are the trends that we are <laughs> going to follow. But why this feature is not so near? Uh, why we cannot simply uh, start applying this principle since, uh, since today? Just come back to this number, this huge number. When we see that the 70% only has fully embraced DevOps in the company. Of course, we fear, we fear that probably we, what we are talking about uh, is, not so, is not so near, it's not so easy to be happened, to be happened. Uh, anyway, anyway, for our role, if we are a consultant or if you are engineer in, in a company, uh, we all have to be prepared, we have to be ready and give the good advice for to our boss or to our customer. So basically, basically to be in time or not in time is probably um, a point of view. 
because uh, because probably if you work in a tech company everything go faster and what I explain today is a standard is what happen every day but we we are talking about some industry that are historically looking to, to, to change like finance an example uh, probably this this is something that they they need to approach and some companies especially the small company don't know about devops well so uh, we have to be able uh, to bring solutions that are practical solutions that are easy to be integrated and we are to be able to create uh, some uh, some part that are step by step so we have to um, lead the customer lead the company through through easy step to what we are thinking is the best solution for the customer so um, in this context in this contest uh, uh, and that's why i included in many slides uh, the, the word kubernetes that is uh, um, that is not related to uh, this theoretical part uh, but this practical solution uh, and kubernetes in, in this scenario is very helpful it's very helpful because uh, can be run on cloud on on-premise so it cover many scenarios um, as I already told, it is described by source code, so is ready to be uh, replicated, is ready to implement an infrastructure as a, cost, uh, as a code scenario, uh, can be easily automated for deployment, an example, and can scale, of course, can be bought on cloud without any issues and without any manual effort or limited manual effort and with the control that you need so it is it embrace the no hops uh, philosophy and it's very near serverless configuration because it requires very very few effort and it's multi-cloud so it doesn't is not prone to vendor lock-in policies and it's a very very good solution that probably uh, solve most of the issues we talked about and give a lot of opportunities we have so um, with this with this last slide I, slide I just want to um, tell you thanks thank you for listening and thank you for having me in this in this um, great event I'm I'm very I'm very happy to uh, being able to share my experience and my talks about the future of DevOps. So if you have any question, uh, if you want to share your opinion about this topic and you, if you want to, um, to give me some feedback about the presentation, things that I can include in the next uh, uh, session, things that I can improve, uh, just don't hesitate to reach me uh, on by mail or on social network like Twitter, Medium and LinkedIn. Just Follow me on Medium if you want to get some of my article about DevOps. I will be happy to uh, continue on writing about that topics. So thank you for listening. Thank you for having me. Bye bye.